There's a lot of great roller coasters out there, and I'm not saying that any of the rides that we're about to talk about are bad by any means. However, some get a little hyped up more than others that can lead to disappointment. I think it's a combination of preference and also if you have people overselling things to you that your expectations are so high that they can't possibly meet them. And you know, I will also throw in that this really can change over time. Like you can have your expectations here and then when you actually ride something, it's like, oh, it didn't quite get there. But then the more you ride it, the more you like get used to that experience. And so you can look past what your original expectations are. I think about the first time I rode Nemesis at Alton Towers, I was let down after my first ride. But then I rode a couple more times. I'm like, wait, actually, this is really good. And so now like I, I wouldn't put that on this list, you know? And I know that you've had similar experiences. Yeah, the first time I rode Storm Chaser, I was like really let down. I think I overhyped it like so much in my head, which was hilarious because the only other one I think I'd ridden at that point was Twisted Cyclone. And yeah. I was like, well, that was so much better. And now, now I'm like, oh no, that was stupid. Well, to be <laughs> fair, I was probably one of those people that was way overhyping Storm Chaser because I oh, just you loved it. Were. When I rode Storm Chaser for the first time, I think my expectations were here. And so then, after riding it, I was selling it up here. So if it didn't meet that line for you, then yeah, I could see how you could be disappointed. Yeah, but even aside from, you know, expectations that are drawn up by other people who overhype or undersell or oversell or whatever, you also have rides that have cult followings that just don't really deserve them. Yeah. In our opinion. Now, some of that can be nostalgia. Some of that can be home park bias. Some of that can be bias against your home park. Like, this could really swing either way. You know, we're talking about overhype rides, but there's also underhype rides. So, That's true. you know, this is 15 different roller coasters that we thought of. We don't agree on all of them. No. Mind you. No, 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 no. So we're going to go through some that we agree with and then some that you think are overhyped, some that I think are overhyped, and uh, oh, let's see what we come up with. First one. I'm gonna say, let's start off by <laughs> pissing everybody off right <laughs> off the bat. That is Millennium Force at Cedar Point. Listen, this was fantastic when it first opened. I, I you know, I wasn't there, but listen, in 2000, <laughs> like nothing else Three like year old this existed. <laughs> <laughs> you just made a lot of people feel really old by yeah, saying probably. that. Listen, it's a great ride. It really is. But I think when I first went to Cedar Point, people were saying this was like the best roller coaster in the world. And there's still some people say that, but I think this is one that's slowly dying out. You know, people have, I think, accepted at this point that Millennium Force is not number one. So a lot of this really comes down to uh, modern innovation. Rides are getting better. It's just a fact. I mean, you know, you, the old, nothing wrong with those old school attractions, but like, you know, technology has evolved so far from how things used to be. But yeah, like as, you know, Giga Coasters get better and Millennium Force drops as far as how good it is in comparison to other, the hype level does not change. <laughs> Everyone is still just as hype as if Millennium Force opened yesterday. A ride that I've just never understood the hype for is Phoenix at Knobles. This is one that you haven't experienced That's all yet. That's you, yeah. But you know, like there are people who still place this as the number one wooden roller coaster. It wins that award a lot. A <laughs> lot. And this is a small little ride that like, I think that if you went in with no expectations at all, you'd probably really like it. But I went in expecting this to be a world-class roller coaster. This doesn't place in my top 100. Like, well, didn't she say that it, you don't even think it's the best Woody at the park? No, I like Twister more. <laughs> I definitely like Twister more. Like this is a, Fun roller coaster for what it is, you know, buzz bars, has some good airtime pops at the end. This one just does not do it for me at all, which is funny because I'm normally an airtime guy, but this one, I don't know, I, I definitely make an exception for it. I've, I've never understood the hype for this one. In fact, I would probably put this as my number one most overhyped roller coaster out there. So we're doing Whoa. that at the beginning of the video. Whoa. <laughs> So my first ever international roller coaster trip was going to Spain and checking out Port Aventura and even more so than Shambhala, I feel like Furious Baco was like really hyped up to me. Like, oh my gosh, you gotta do Furious Baco. It didn't do it for me. It just didn't. I got off the ride and I was like, that was it? Really? It did it for me. <laughs> it did it I for love you it. and that's fine. <laughs> and honestly, I think the fact that I only get to ride it one time doesn't yeah. help. I did get to sit on the inside, which is apparently a better experience. You did, yes. Um, yeah. But I also had you in August chewing in my ears about how good this ride was, and then I'm just like, mm. What was the reason for it? Was it because of the it was roughness? Because the roughness is that. usually people's number one complaint about it. I just thought, I was like, they didn't really do anything. It was like over, like, bad. Here's one we can both agree on 
Superman the Ride at Six Straight Flags New the England. Ride. Call it what it is. This is not a good hyper coaster. I'm sorry. Everyone like raves about this thing. Again, no, another one that's been at the top of the list. But what they did to that in terms of restraint makes this not even enjoyable at all. Are like, we talking about the one in New England? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking about the one at Six Flags America and Darien Lake. Well, either way, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Did you seriously? Th yes. There's too many Superman hyper coasters. So next one is at a park that has so many incredible roller coasters. And for whatever reason, people still fixate on the weakest one at the park. And that's Holiday World with Thunderbird. I don't understand. There are so many people that are like, oh, that's the best roller coaster in the park. Who says that? I hear people I've saying that's it. the second best behind Voyage. Uh, but, okay, well that too. But either way, like I think that Legend and Raven take a big old dookie on Thunderbird, honestly. Their woodies are incredible. Yeah. Thunderbird is really good. It's I personally a fun ride. I personally ride, don't I think it. it's overhyped. I personally don't. It's my favorite wing coaster. But You're overhyped. Well, according to a lot of people on Reddit, yes, that is true. <laughs> Liseberg in Sweden is a beautiful theme park. I love that place. They're home to some great rides, but Balder is just one that, I don't know, man. That was just way oversold for me. It was so tame. Like, really? Yeah. I mean, it's one of the four Intamin prefabs That's why in the I'm world. Like shocked. The only other one I had done was El Toro, which is so high for me. Going to Bride Balder, I was so excited for it. I got off and I was like, that was it? Like, so it, really it felt like compare. a family coaster. It felt like a family coaster. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it multiple times. So don't pull the, well, you gotta try it in different seats. I wrote it in different seats. It still did not do it for me. I think this is another one that we might anger people by saying, but Twisted Colossus, man. Oh, it's so overhyped. It definitely is. This is coming from someone that has not had a dueling ride ever. Which is just so so sad it is and like the, the thing is like the layout by itself without the dueling aspect like they're very low tier like rmc layouts like the thing that makes it awesome is doing it side by side yeah. the way that it's run and operated right now it's very like lackluster. yeah it, yeah i like, i still like the ride but I, I think there's so many people that think that's like like a really high tier RMC and I'm like <laughs> Well, when I first rode it in twenty sixteen and every single ride was dueling, that was in my top ten. Twisted Colossus has dropped so far for me. More than probably any RMC. Like that one went from being near the top to now near the bottom. Yeah. Which is so tragic. Here's another one we can agree on. Olympia looping. It was cool, it was iconic. But the restraints kill it. It's the same as Superman. If you put different restraints on the thing, I think it'd be a different story. I don't know if it's people hyping it up because of how good it is. I think it is naturally hyped up by how iconic it is. And how large it is. World's yeah. largest traveling coaster. That's a big deal. Yeah, and it's like kind of like, I don't know. It almost feels like it's like a rite of passage for enthusiasts. Like you have to track down Olympia Looping. You have to you go find it. It's yeah, somewhere in it's Europe. It's like a pilgrimage. <laughs> like, I gotta go track that thing down and find it. But it's like, that's sort of the most fun part of it is getting to it. And yeah, then, and seeing it. It's visually it, yeah. amazing. But, but then it hurts. It's really, really uncomfortable. Like, and you know, that that is enough to kill a ride for me is being in pain the whole time. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know. That's That's one that like, I'm glad that I did it, but I don't know that I would seek it out again. All right, I'm back to piss off the Ohio enthusiast again. Guys, Orion. <laughs> you, you would two, say Orion. You're two giga coasters in the state and neither of them are that good. It's the two worst ones and they're both in Ohio. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. Orion, look, I don't know if it's because I am comparing it to Fury, which is the only other B&M giga coaster I've Oh, uh, you right? haven't done Leviathan, yeah. yeah. I feel like if you had done Leviathan, then maybe once you did Orion, you'd be like, okay, okay. So this one is definitely purely an expectations issue, is, you know, comparing it to probably one of the best roller coasters in the world. So I, maybe I didn't give Orion a standing chance, but, uh, you know, it's not even a Okay, good. It's <laughs> Sweden, I'd like to issue you an apology. My God, why are you picking up Sweden so much today? We're going back to Liseberg. My gosh! <laughs> Helix, another one that was just overhyped for me. But it's got Iris score. Yes. Oh, I love the soundtrack. Yeah. It's probably my favorite roller coaster soundtrack of all time. The layout is good. I think what just did it for me was the launches. It was, again, expectation. This was like probably the biggest mock roller coaster I'd ever done at the time. And so I expected it to be like up here. You know, people were saying it was 
one of the best coasters in Europe. I think at one point I won a pole for being the best coaster in Europe. And so when I wrote it, I was like, I don't even think that makes my, like, my like, top five or top ten roller coasters in Europe. Like, it's, it's a good roller coaster, don't get me wrong. I, I very much like it. It's still one of the best multi-loopers that Mach has done. But get better launches. You get, be- yeah, you, you get better launches, and then that ride experience will be completely different. I'm scared to okay. see this one. Right. Okay. I'm going to get yelled at. Magnum. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so hate me! Same with Millennium Force. It is on that level of, like, when it opened. I can totally acknowledge. Listen, that thing was built by hand. They didn't have computers. I think it's really cool what they accomplished. Yeah, for that, it's awesome. But people who put it up there as the best roller coaster at Cedar Point. No, I mean, I have at least two close friends that it's their number one roller coaster, period. It That's does. One of the, this this is, is it's a cult, a cult following. following. That was weird. And for those of you who are like, well, you just need to ride it in the right seat or a different time of day. magic seat. You gotta get Listen, row three. I'm like, they all hurt. <laughs> I've ridden row three a lot of times. I've ridden this at its peak, you know, time of day. And the last hills are crazy. I'll give you that. But the rest of the ride leading up to it is just does, does not do it for me. Like, I, I can acknowledge that the last hills are crazy. But everything else is just like, eh, eh. I just had a realization. What? That's why I don't like the end of Airy Force. It feels like the end of Magnum. I hate that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, one last B&M that I got to acknowledge. I'm sorry, it's just so overhyped. Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Wait, what? What? That's just Banshee. You didn't yeah, say you were going to do surprise. Nitro? It's not Banshee, it's Nitro. <gasps> it's overhyped. Oh my god. It's nowhere near as good as some people say. You tricked me. You were Banshee. I did write Banshee, but... You son of a <laughs> Nitro has a fun layout. I can admire how the helix there going into the break run is like pretty forceful, but the airtime hills. The airtime hills are fine. I can uh, still hear you. They do not deliver. Well, yeah, you're sitting right next to me. I know. The airtime hills do not deliver the best airtime like some people claim. Yes, they do. I don't know. I get plenty of airtime. I might push myself up a little bit (laughs) off the ground, but it doesn't mean it's not there. I can't believe you just disrespected me like this on camera. Stop smiling! <laughs> so let's go overseas and talk about a roller coaster that was fantastic. It was really, really good. But going into it, we were under the impression that this might be the best RMC in the world. And Zadra was not. Listen, Zadra has great pacing. Like you fly into the brake run so fast. The elements are really good. But I think that for me, the RMCs I tend to lean towards are the ones that are longer experiences that have more airtime, and Zadra's not really about that. You know what has more airtime than Zadra? Nitro. That's nice. Anyways, Zadra is just, it's still really good, but we ended up liking Hyperion more. Like, yep. that's that's an example of a ride that was under hype for us. Like, I was told Hyperion, oh, it's not that good. And then we wrote it, we're like, man, that, that was, was amazing. That was incredible. Some people were like, well, it wasn't running as fast as it could. Listen, that was our one visit to Poland. If we go back, then maybe we can retract this. But it was really fast. That wasn't it the was. issue. Yeah. I wasn't, like, disappointed by the speed. Yeah. I was disappointed about the fact that it didn't have airtime. I guess it just showed that more of, like, the power-centric RMCs are not... It ain't it for me as much. But I don't know. Iron Gwazi is pretty powerful, and that might be the best arm scene. Yeah, but that has a lot of airtime, too. That is true. I yeah. don't know. I still think Wildfire is the best arm scene in Europe. So. I agree. So this is one that Taylor very much does not agree with me with, but X2 at Magic Mountain. I don't understand why that ride has such, again, a cult following. People love that ride so much. And for me, it's like I have to sit in a specific row, in a specific seat, in a specific position, bracing myself. I shouldn't have to do all this to have a reasonable experience. Okay. When you talk about it like that, I I agree. You should not have to do that. You have to do so much. It's like, wear a helmet. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the thing is that this was a prototype. It is, like, literally just iconic. It is so cool in what they came up with. It is very and cool. And don't get me wrong. It is fun. There's only so much they can do to make it better. They've already gone through a huge revamp, turning it from X to X2 to improve it. And SNS has gone on and made better versions of this with Dinaconda and Edgenica that have fixed those problems with X2. But at least with that specific ride, it's like, yeah, if you want to enjoy it, this is what you have to do. But once you do those things, oh man, it's good. So last one on our list is a roller coaster that we just recently rode in another country. It is a fantastic ride, don't get me wrong. Really good, really good. However, I feel like the 
overarching thing that comes with this ride is best roller coaster in the world. Yeah. You gotta go because it's the best roller coaster and in the world. And it is out of reach yes. for so many people. So it's one of those like pilgrimages. It's like, it's oh like my gosh, if thing. you can get down there to ride this, it will be the best coaster you'll ever do. But I'm sorry. DC Rivals is not. It's not. It wasn't even my favorite in Australia. It's still really good. Really enjoyable. Backwards, fantastic. And the thing that's interesting is we talked to a good handful of people that are from the like area, and most of them, I felt, said that they had a different favorite. Like, they said Superman or now Leviathan or something, and like they still love DC Rivals. The people but who are hyping up DC Rivals have never, it. Have never done it before and it's and it makes sense because it's like it's a mock hyper it's like it looks crazy there's nothing it's, like it in the united states yes and so it's like again it's one of those like oh my gosh this exists somewhere far down it just it looks incredible in the povs it must be incredible in real life it'll probably be your number one or top five or and something it, it, again it is an amazing ride but it is not the best roller coaster in the world it's just no, not there's no. too much dead space yeah mainly in that helix like i think i said this in the vlogs if you took out that helix i actually think the ride would be stronger i do too because it's a really long ride if you took out an element i don't think the length would suffer and i think if you look at it from like the backward seat point of view it's like okay that is different that that is you know a better experience i don't feel like you can objectively talk about dc rivals you know in when you're just focusing on the backwards yeah since most it's an of charge experience most like, of the time when you're riding it you're not riding it backwards yeah so yeah. that's a very rare thing anyways those are some of the ones that we came up with uh let us know down in the comments below if you agree with any of these if you disagree and you're one of those people that's like a hardcore stand for some I'm of these i'm gonna make so many fake accounts just to be like take back what you said about Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> listen we know that these rides have their fans like i'm sure that if like, someone picked a ride that I was a hardcore stand about, I'd be like, I can't believe it. Oh, no, they, like, dude, the Edge and Ica haters, I'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, those are the ones we came up with. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios. Please don't yell at us too hard. I'm scared of the comments from this video. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>